Oh, hallelujah. Can we test the mic? Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, yes, hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised, God. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, I will always bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you today, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we just thank the Lord for another Sunday. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God is worthy. God is worthy. Hallelujah. In spite of what you've been through, God is yet worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what the situation tried to bring, no matter how the enemy tried to stop you, hallelujah, God is still worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I bless the name of Jesus. I bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This morning was challenging. Hallelujah. But God is yet worthy. He is yet worthy. Hallelujah. He deserves my praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I bless the name of Jesus today for God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. So we just thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for um, joining us this morning. We thank God for being with us and covering us and keeping us. We praise and magnify him today. I can't say it enough. Hallelujah. That thing won't leave me alone. Hallelujah. When I consider, hallelujah, all the ways that he's made, all the doors that he has opened and the ones that he's closed, I got to give him praise. Hallelujah. I got to give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the enemy tried to come in like a flood, hallelujah, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, I bless you, God. Hallelujah. I bless you, Jesus. We worship you today, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, that your word, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, stand sure. Thank you, Lord God. So I bless him today, hallelujah. Y'all just excuse me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. He is so great, hallelujah. He is bigger than your situation. He is bigger than that storm, hallelujah. He is bigger and greater in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. So you tell the devil, get thee behind me, Satan, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, hallelujah. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We used to sing an old song, and when I was growing up, said, have you tried Jesus? He is all right. Hallelujah. Have you tried Jesus? I'm going to ask you today, have you, have you tried him? Have you given him a chance to work some things out for you? He's all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining us. Hallelujah. Online and here in the building here. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just got to take a moment and think back. Think back on what he's done. <laughs> take a moment. Hallelujah. And bless the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, come on. Let's just give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we bless your name today, God. Hallelujah. So we're going to get ready to start our service. Well, we already started by lifting up his name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to have a scripture reading. We'll have a time of praise and worship, and our pastor will come with um, a message for us today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to also pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'll be coming from Psalm chapter 100. And I wasn't really sure when I got here or on the way here what scripture I was going to open up with. But I tell you, as I walked into the building, <laughs> hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I thought about how this song speaks to us and tells us what to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, and how we are to enter. Amen. Hallelujah. So Psalms 100. Hallelujah. I'll read the entire psalm. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 1 says, 
Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter, this is what came to mind, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, hallelujah, and into his courts with praise. Thank you, Jesus. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord. This is our why. For the Lord is good, hallelujah. His mercy is everlasting and his truth, hallelujah, endureth to all generations. We thank God for his word. Hallelujah. We thank God, Lord God, that we are not only going to be hearers of your word, but we're going to be doers. We're going to enter with thanksgiving. We're going to give him praise. We're going to thank his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you today, God. We're just going to go into a time of prayer from here, God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we honor you today, Lord God. We bless you today, Lord God. Oh, you are mighty today, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. No matter what it feels like, God, you are yet worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I will enter into your courts with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I will enter. Hallelujah. I will have praise on today, Lord God, for you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we magnify you today. We honor you today, oh God. We bless Bless your mighty name today, Father God, for you are worthy to be praised, God. We are here not of our own selves, Lord God, but it's you, Lord God, that woke us up, oh God. It is you, Lord God, that brought us here, God. It is you. That has kept us all week long, Father God. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. And your praises, oh God, shall continually be in my mouth, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord God, I lift you up and I honor you and I adore you today, Father God. Lord God, in spite of what I feel, Lord God, in spite of what I see, Lord God, we're going to bless your most holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing us to this day. Thank you, Lord God, for shining your face upon us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for being our provider, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus, for being our steady hand, Lord God. We just thank you and we bless you, Lord God. God, we thank you for an opportunity, Lord God, to raise our voices, to to, to use, Lord God, the activities of our limbs to give you glory and honor on today, Father. Be with us in this service, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Speak through your manservant today, Father God. Lord God, answer to the prayers that rest upon our hearts today, Father God. Lord God, let your word do what it is coming to do, Lord God, and that's to pierce and, and to cut asunder, Lord God. Lord God, to cut away the things that are not like you, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, because we need your word. Lord God, we need your truth, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, because it will endure to all generations. Hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you for truth today, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. God. So we just ask you to have your way, Father. Oh, God, have your way, Jesus. And Lord God, have your way, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray these things, Lord God, and all the things that rest upon our hearts and minds, we give it to you today. We lay it before your altar today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we will bless you and give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, before we go into our worship song, I wanted to sing a little bit of this uh, this congregational song that I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> I woke up and I was thinking about it. But um, it just says, uh, have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried him? Have you tried him? He's all right. Have you tried him? Have you tried him? He's all right. He's the lily of the valley. He's all right. He's the bright and morning star. Yes, he is. He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? 
He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Yes. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Yes. He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's all right with me. Hallelujah. And he's more than all right with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is a great God and he is worthy to be praised. How great is our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We bless you today. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord God. How great is our God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless you today, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. The splendor of a king. Hallelujah. The splendor of a king. Clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, the splendor of a king. The splendor of a king, oh, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice, he wraps himself in light. Oh, darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, age to age, he stands. Oh, time is in his hands. Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one. Oh, Father, Spirit, and Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, how great is our God. Oh, sing with me how great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great, oh, how great is our God. 
how great, oh, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> He's a name above all names. You're the name above all names. Oh, worthy of all praise. Thank you, Lord. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Oh, you are, you're the name above all names. Yes, you are, God, worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Oh, how great, how great, yes, you are, is our God. Oh, sing with me, how great is our God. And all oh, will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Hallelujah. How great. Yes, he is. He is our God. Oh, sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. Oh, how great is our God. Hallelujah. He's a name above all names. You're the name above all names. Yes, you are, God, worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Oh, you're the name above all names. You're the name above all names. Hallelujah, yeah. Worthy of all praise. Thank you, Jesus. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God, how great is our God, oh, sing with me, how great is our God, and all oh, will see how great, how great is our God, hallelujah. Oh, how great is our God, how great, yes you are, it is our God, oh, sing with me, how great is our God, and oh, we'll see how great, how great, all oh, we'll see, and oh, we'll see how great, oh, how great, all oh, we'll We'll see and all will see how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, you are great. You're a great God, hallelujah, Jesus. You're a great God, yes. All oh, will see how great, all oh, will see how great is our God. Hallelujah. Oh, 
oh how great is our god how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all oh, will see how great how great is our god Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. You are great, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you are great, God. Hallelujah. When I think back and I consider, yes, you are great, God. Oh, yeah, yeah. You are great, God. I've got to make that proclamation today. You are great. You are great, God. In the midst of my situation, in the midst of my storm, I will proclaim, you are great, God. Yes, you are. Yeah. Here's how God. Hallelujah, Jesus. How great is our God. How great. Yes, you are, God. Our God, oh, sing with me how great is our God, and all oh, will see how great, how great, yes, our God, you are great, God, hallelujah, I will sing and proclaim you are, you are great, God, hallelujah, no matter what comes my way you are you are great god hallelujah i will sing how great you are hallelujah how great is our god how great thank you god it's our god oh sing with me how great is our god and all will see how great every knee shall bow hallelujah and every tongue shall confess you are great god yes hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah oh how great is our god sing with me how great hallelujah is our god and all will see how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah. Oh, how great is our God. How great. Yes, you are God. Our God. Oh. Hallelujah, it's our God. And oh, see how great, oh, how great. Oh, we'll see, hallelujah. And oh, we'll see how great, how great. And oh, we'll see how great. How great is our God, is our God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Oh, we honor your name, Jesus. Oh, you are great. Oh, you are great. Oh, you are great. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I've got to speak and declare that thing. Hallelujah. That he is great. Hallelujah. And he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun. Hallelujah. To the setting of the same. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His name deserves to be lifted high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the highest praise that I can give. Hallelujah, Jesus, because you are great, because you are great. Oh, you are great, God. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. You are great, God. You are great. Hallelujah. We bless you today, God. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. We honor your name. We bless your name, Jesus. How great. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. How great, how great you are. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. How great. How great. Yes, 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 Lord. Is our God. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. As we think of your greatness, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, as we think of your goodness, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, you've been so good to us, Lord God. Through the highs and lows of this week, Lord God, you've been faithful, Lord God. You've loved on us, Lord God. You've kept us close, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. How great. Hey, Lord God, thank you, Father God. How great. Thank you so much, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We love you and we bless you, Lord God. We honor you for this day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being in the midst, Lord God. We ask that you'll open our hearts and minds, Lord God. Receive our worship, Lord God. Let it be joyous, Lord God, in your presence, Lord God. May you be pleased, Father God. Continue to minister to our hearts, Lord God, as we receive your word today, Lord God, from you. Allow us all, Lord God, to be challenged, convicted, corrected, but most of all, committed to you, Father. We love you so much, Lord, and we thank you for this time that you've given us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Hey, you have to see. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, today I'm going to give a couple of notes, but I'm going to start in uh, Luke 22, 39 to 48. So I'll be there. Uh, so on Wednesday, I spoke about an opportunity that we'll have to be able to uh, just do an, an outreach event. So we're going to partner with Blessing Bags San Antonio. They provide blessing bags. I kind of spoke about that if you saw the message on Wednesday. So they have a an event on the last uh, Saturday of the month at 10 o'clock. So I'll provide some additional details. So right now I'm just trying to find out. Now we can support it, but I'm just trying to find out when they um, put together the bags. I don't know if they put together the bags all at one time because they meet and then they kind of disperse in different spots around downtown San Antonio to deliver bags, to pray and to meet with others. And then they'll come back together. So I'm not sure if they need the bags to produce produced um, on that Saturday. I think that's the 28th or if it's sometime before. So I'm trying to find out about that. But either way, then there'll be an opportunity for us to be able to uh, join. So in this week, you'll see me put a note out. I know I haven't been doing the announcements. I'm trying to get to that. How how to share the announcements online and here at the same time. We have a television screen here, but then just trying to focus on how to kind of switch screens. So I haven't I haven't done that yet. But I will put out some information this week about that event and some things that they're looking for. So the president of the of the uh, organization kind of reached out, and said, hey, these are the things we normally have, but this is what we're in need of now. So we'll put that out if you like. If you're here locally, you know, great. We'd love to have you with us. This is an opportunity for us to just uh, to join with another organization. Right. It's not all about what we do here, but just join with others in meeting the needs of the community. So this is what we're going to reach out to do. And then we have some other things as well, but we'll get into that uh, as they come forward. Right there. So there's some other things that's unfolding. And so I praise God for the opportunity just for Wayne and, you know, getting us a connection with uh, Pastor Franklin. I tell you, that brother's on fire. And so I was like, man, I'm not doing a lot. <laughs> you know, you think about compared to some of the things I do, like, wow, I mean, he's really getting after it for the Lord. So it was definitely a great inspiration for me to be able to connect with someone else that has a heart for just bringing hope to communities and helping them with other pastors. So I, I definitely appreciate that connection. So uh, I thank you all for your patience as we kind of moving along little by little by little. So I bless you all. Thank you for joining us today. Norm, Debbie, thank you so much for, for being with us. We appreciate you. Today, we're going to talk about don't miss your joy. And this will be almost uh, a part two from last week. So if you think about coming, come and die so you can go and live, this is, this is part two of that. 
I'm not sure how much this is going to go. I've been working on this sermon. God gave me this all week. And probably Monday I gave Yolanda the, the raw version. <laughs> Just because I was like, I got to get it out. I can't say this over the pulpit. Let me tell you this. <laughs> I had an example. But every time I tried to work on the message, I had the scriptures. But I just it just wouldn't come. And, and even as I was driving, God changed the message. I had a different message title. Uh, but but as Yolanda said, like, if you got the scriptures, that's all you need. So the Lord to do the rest. Amen. So we're going to read from I'm going to read from Luke 22. That's kind of my source scripture. Then I'll be in, in, in uh, Hebrews 12 for a little bit of time. And then we'll double back to last week and then we'll bring it back forward again. So in Luke 22 verses 39 to 48. Amen. It says, then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, or nevertheless, as it says in King James, nevertheless, right, not thy will, not my will be done, but uh, thy will be done. Amen. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently. And as he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. At last, he stood up again and returned to disciples only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. But even as Jesus said this, a crowd ap approached led by Judas, one of the 12 disciples. Judas walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss. But Jesus said, Judas, would you betray the son of man with a kiss? Amen. So when we think about this message and you see in verse 44 that he was in agony of spirit, that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. Now, this this condition is called hematrodrosis. And it's a, an extreme medical condition that causes one's sweat to become blood where the sweat glands are surrounded by tiny blood vessels that constrict and then dilate to the point of rupture, causing blood to effuse into sweat gland, glands. And this is a sign of extreme anguish or grief. So in this moment, Jesus knows what is about to happen. And so he's in extreme anguish and grief. And it says in the scriptures, right, he was in such agony of spirit that the, the sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood and that the angels came to strengthen him because he understood bodily what I'm about to experience. But he says, and I like the King James, I don't have the King James, I said, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So what I wanted to connect from last week, because we saw the rich young ruler, and he has this opportunity, but there's not a nevertheless. And a lot of times, right, and I'm going to go to uh, um, Hebrews 12, so you hold that for a second, 12 and 2. But you have this situation. When I say don't miss your joy, we spend so much time looking at what we have or this is what I have. I don't want to lose it. This is what I got to go through. I don't want to do it. That we don't even look at the joy of what's on the other side of our obedience. What's on the joy on the other side of us giving up? Let's go to Hebrews 12. Because when you think about what Jesus had to go through, right? We talk about the joy that was before him. Amen. There was a joy that was before Jesus. Right now in your life, there's a joy that sits on the other side of whatever situation you're going through right now. It sits on the other side of whatever God is telling you to let go of. It sat on this other side of the rich young ruler for the joy of giving up of eternal salvation and giving up those things that you have a hold on. Here's your benefit. So in Hebrews 12 and two, well, I'll read well, one. It says, therefore, uh, uh, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that's set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So when you think about Jesus, Jesus, okay, I ha I understand what I'm about to go through. I am in such great anguish. My sweat is like blood. Angels are coming to strengthen me because I understand what I'm about to endure. What is he about to endure? You think about he's being betrayed by one of the 12 that he selected. The others left him. 
But he said he wasn't going to be alone because the father was with him. He was lied on. He was mocked and beaten. He was denied by Peter. He was turned over to the local government. He was, uh, and then after, after being sentenced to death, he was scourged, beaten. If you, some of you may have saw the passion of the Christ, right? That was probably the most graphic description of what Jesus, and that probably didn't even do, probably wasn't even, uh, you know, it was probably the best portrayal that you can reach when you see that. After being scourged, he was stripped and given a scarlet robe and a crown of thorns. He continued to be spit upon and assaulted on the head. And when they finished, Jesus would be unrecognizable. He made he was made to carry his own cross, the instrument that would kill him, that he would be killed upon. And then he was crucified. And when you think about crucifixion, it was the most painful and torturous method of execution ever devised and was used for on the most despised and wicked people. And it was it was this it, this great pain. It was so horrific uh, was the pain that a word was designed to help explain it excruciating, which meant literally from the cross. And then at, at last, before his breath, his last breaths, even the father would forsake him. And he understood that this was what he was going to go through. But for the joy that was before him, that the, the, the goal of accomplishing what God was, what was on the other side, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go through it, even though I understand all these things are about to happen to me. And this is what my body is feeling right now. Right. The angels are stripping me. I know what I'm about to do. But for the joy of accomplishing this, because I understand what it's going to do for the world, I'm going to do it. But when we go back to the rich young ruler and we think about our own lives, then he he couldn't say for the joy of receiving eternal life. I will sell everything I own and give it to the poor. I will follow you, Jesus. Right? That could have been his story. Actually, it could still have been. Because even after that, he walked away. You can still come. He had an opportunity where he still got breath in your body. You can still come back. And some of us have that opportunity. But in many times, like the rich young ruler, we sit back and look at what we're going to lose. We're looking at the trouble that's in front of us. We're looking at the bad thing that's there rather than looking at, man, what's on the other side of this obedience? What's on the other side of me giving these things up? What's on the other side of me being a love difficult people? What's on the other side of me being able to stand and trust in God in the midst of this situation? What's on the other side? That should be what's encouraging us. We missing our joy simply because we're looking at what we have in our hand right now. So you hear the, the my what a bird in the hand is worth two in a bush. That's not working in this situation. That don't work for you. When we're looking at what we got right now, right, that's, that could hurt you because you can lose out on what God has for you simply because you, you're worried about what you're going to lose, what you got to go through. Jesus, went, he went through a horrible death for all of us. I did it for the joy of accomplishing God of this purpose. So I'll go through it so that you and I could be with with him forever. He said, I, I love the world so much, right? That he gave God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, right? I'll go through that for you because that's what it means. That that's, that's the cost that has to be paid. I'll pay that cost. I'll pay the cost for sin. I'll do it because I want us to be together forever. He wasn't going to miss the joy. But so often, y'all, whatever you're going through, I pray that as I'm speaking, God is, 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 is has you thinking about that right now. For the joy, so many times we miss those moments. But see, for not, for all of us, it doesn't always end or, or doesn't always relate to eternal life. There are times where it may be, a, a, it could relate, get there. But then in our disobedience, we may miss out on something God has for us right now. And then you got to go through door number two. I know someone, right? I'm going to change a little bit of the story to protect the innocent. But it's a true story, but I'm going to change some things. But I, I, I said I knew somebody and they were a couple and the marriage wasn't going right. And so now the, the spouse, uh, the spouse, uh, wife commits adultery. And so then after committing adultery, now they're trying to come together again, right? They're trying to find reconciliation, but the husband's having a hard time forgiving. God has been moving on his, on the wife's heart 
she's changing. She's become a different person. I'm showing you that, that I'm repentant of what I've done. I'm showing for fruit meet with repentance, right? As scriptures talk about, I'm showing you this. I'm, I'm trying to do my very best to prove to you that I, I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm living for God. I'm doing everything I can. Decades go by. They've been married 30 years. This occurred like a year 15. But the husband never budged. God's been on him. Forgive. Love. I'm not doing it. I'm pain. I'm pain. I'm hurt. And, he, and he's hurt because he remembers what he had to go through as a child to watch his parents do the same thing. And so he's struggling with not just the situation in front of him, but the situation that happened in his childhood. I can't let that go. Lord, I'm struggling. But instead of coming back, remember, we're talking about working out your salvation with fear and trembling. He just left it there. I'm not going to deal with this pain. And it affected their relationship to where now is it cannot become what God intended for it to become. And we are in situations like that where regardless of why we get there, right? We have these fears, we have these, we have these angers and this pain. But then we, we forget about the joy because then what most of us are seeking is peace. I, want, I just want a little bit of peace. I just want a, a, just a little bit of, of release from the pain. That's why some of us may get into adult, adulterous relationships. Not everybody getting in a adulterous relationship trying to do something crazy. Some people are just trying to find some way out. That was their way out. Not saying I agree with it. Some people use drugs. Some people use alcohol trying to escape from the pain of their situation. We see it every day. People go through it. Some of you may have that. It may not, like I told y'all, it's not alcohol for me. It may be something else. It was something else for me. But it was something to try to escape, trying to find some peace in the situation. But while we're going through the anguish, we forget about the joy that exists on the other side of that. So then if I can see like, Lord, in this situation, I'll give my own testimony here in a second. But if I can see for the man, if I can see, OK, if I can forgive. Right. The humiliation, especially for a man. Right. When this is committed against a man, when a man. Right. Can say, you know what? I went through this. I, I, I humbled myself. I forgave. And boy, we can live in peace. We can have a great love. You know, we can share testimony and help others. We can be able to raise a peaceful, have a peaceful home. Right. If I can just let it go. If I can give the pain. Not, it doesn't mean that God doesn't care about you. It doesn't mean that he wants you to ignore the pain, but he wants to help you heal from it which is different, then I can think about, but we don't always think about what's the blessing on the other side of that thing. All we're seeing is what's right in front of us. And we can't see beyond that. I remember for myself, when we, when we go back into the scriptures, right? And we're talking about pleasing God without faith, it's impossible to please him. Because in those situations, I'll say this and then I'll go to my own story. When, when we're in these situations, it's a, it's a matter of faith for us to be able to not, see by not not to operate by what we see but to operate by faith what is not there but i'm gonna trust you lord i'm gonna believe you i'm gonna hold on to you but a lot of times we struggle with that and we need and i pray that we can use the rich young rulers example to teach us on what we can lose out on because god has a lot of good for us but to get to the good Sometimes you got to be in the midst of the very bad. Sometimes you have to be at the doorstep of you got to give it all up. You got to lose yourself, right? When you talk about gaining the world or losing your soul, like Richard was like, man, my whole world is wrapped up in, in this in this money and my security, right? And the position and the notoriety and whatever it gives me, right? This this money gives me. I don't want to lose that. I'm gaining the world. I don't want to do that, but it's going to cost you your soul. But in those moments, we don't always think like this situation is going to cost me my soul. This situation is going to cause me to lose out on the best that God has for me. Because see, when, when you, you don't want door number two, when God's trying to give you the very best of what he has for you and you be like, no, I don't want that. What do you think you're going to get after that? Now, God is gracious and good, but, gar but guaranteed you're about to go a long, a long route. Right. Israelites, same thing. They had the opportunity. They didn't have to be in the desert for 40 years. They made a decision. They didn't want to believe they didn't want to believe the report of two people. They want to believe the report of the 10. OK, guess what? Until the, everybody over with 20, 20, 22, 21, until all y'all die, man, y'all in this wilderness. He protected them. 
right? Their clothes didn't wear out. You talking about 40 years? You got some clothes for 40 years, right? Your clothes don't wear out. Are you giving it, passing it down from one person to the next? I don't even want to know what that was like, right? And then you're sitting there waiting for the last two people to die before you can get into the promised land. Oh, there's something I got for you. Disobedience comes with a cost. Choosing to have door number two comes with a price. And, and a lot of those people, the Israelites had to suffer. The children had to suffer. They could have been in the promised land. But when we don't accept what God has for the joy, what's on the other side, there's a price to pay. So then if we don't choose to, if we don't want to pay the price, then we're going to get something else. And thank, you better thank God for his grace and mercy in spite of sometimes, in spite of what we do, doing. We willfully running from him. We in the church and won't do what God said. But thank God for his grace. You know, a few years ago, and I didn't tell the story, and I'll get to this, but, you know, several years ago, 2016, God told me that I'll be remarried within five years. I'm married, chilling. God says I'm going to be re remarried in five years. And he explains why. No, he doesn't give why, but he tells me what's going to happen. And I know this person, and this person is going to, you know, stretch me beyond where I'm at, teach them, you know, and I'm going to help them to hear well done, like good and faithful servant. They're going to help me. I'm sitting on my bed, chilling, been married, you know, at this time, almost 20 years. I'm like months, a couple months short of married, 20 years. Two weeks later, God tells me to tell her, tell my wife at the time. And I was like, man, she's going to be mad. God was like, tell her. So I tell her, and she told everybody, including Yolanda, told everybody that she knew. But in the two years, God began to reveal to me what was going on in the relationship, things I didn't even know. I was like, I didn't even know this was happening. By October of 2018, I want it out. Like, Lord, I can't, I don't, she said one more thing. I was like, Lord, I can't take this no more. God was like, do not push no buttons. I'm on the website. Leave it alone. When she want to leave, let her leave. But in October of 2018, my father was, was uh, declining in health. He had a salivary gland cancer. He had it when he was in, in uh, college. It went into remission, came back out of remission in uh, 2009. And then, so now we're in 2018. So he was suffering for nine years. It came back. And he was, you know, body slowly deteriorating. My aunt was like, look, you need to come home. And you need to come home now. So I went home for, um, for maybe about a week or so. You know, and I came back, man, I wasn't even where I was supposed to be. Man, I, was, I, I, just, I was there, I was, home, I was home, but I wasn't home. I was at work. And my boss was like, dude, you need to go back home. You know, you go home, stay as long as you need. So I went back home. I didn't want to see my father pass away, but I did. You know, I was home when he passed away. And I needed, I needed to be home. I didn't want, cause I didn't want to be around my father. I didn't want to see my father, you know, in that condition. And, and then right after that, my daughter graduated from UTSA here locally. So at the time we was in Alabama. So we flew out here, spent like a metric ton of money, you know, and it was a lot of drama surrounded that, but I wanted my daughter to be honored, you know, cause that was her graduation. She only graduated once from college, you know, then there's Christmas, you know, my brought my stepmom out and man, I was tired. I was beat. And by January, all I wanted was peace. And I said, Lord, whatever it costs, I just want to be at peace. I want to be healthy physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, whatever the cost, Lord, I want it. And so I just couldn't take no more. God wouldn't let me out. I said, look, I told my ex-wife, I said, look, I, 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 I got to move out. I, I can't be here and deal with the marriage and my father. I got to deal with one. I, it's too much, too much for me to handle. And at the time, several months prior, God had told me that I needed a friend, and I needed a friend now. And there was a brother, uh, James White. He's out of Washington, D.C. He's out of, not Washington, D.C., Washington State. And we had met in South Korea, but we had started talking several years ago, but we started talking. I was like, this is the guy. We had talked once a week. Then it was twice a week, three times a week. By the time my father passed, we was talking every day. Man, I wouldn't have made it without that brother. I mean, like, literally, I would not have made it without him. And... Um, you know, when I told my wife or my ex-wife I wanted to move out, she was like, I want a divorce. Like, as fast as I said it, she said, I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm just, I just need a minute, All right? And she told me exactly why. Very, but she understood what she was doing. She understood why she was doing it, and she understood what she was going to continue to do. So then it became like me going from trying to heal to I was a bad person. Some of her friends, I'm not saying she said anything, but man, her friends came at me said all these lies and stuff. And I just kept my mouth shut. I didn't say nothing. And I haven't said nothing even recently. And I didn't say anything to protect her. I didn't say anything about the abuse my mom gave. The, and God's like, why are you protecting? You're protecting the people that hurt you. They didn't even care about it. But he said, you don't have to tell your, you have to tell your story because somebody, people need to know. But don't use it in a manner that will be where I'm trying to 
upstage her, somebody or, or abuse somebody's name or do anything like that. Don't use it in a bad way, but tell your story. Because the whole time, all I wanted was peace. Right? So then, you know, we get to a point, we get divorced. You know, uh, Yolanda and I are dating. And then I go home, you know, and this is when the kids, uh, you know, uh, their father passed away. I went home. I went to see her during that time because I knew him as well. And, um, you know, was, then the pandemic hits. And we were in the pandemic. Then he passed away. And then when I went home, God was like, Ham, you need to bring her here. So it was like year four. This was year four. And I thought like, okay, I got some time. We come back. We get together and the house is super chaotic, man. And I did not handle it in a gala way, especially first year. Like I call it year one hamp and nobody likes year one hamp. And I promise you, nobody likes that dude. So every year I would have to assess myself to say, okay, where am I at? But the whole time I was telling Yolanda, I just wanted peace, right? I just, I just want peace. Like, you know, I had gained weight. Like, so when I'm going through stressful situations, I don't lose weight. I gain weight. I can't, I can't lose it, right? We were vegans at the time. I'm still gaining weight. I gained like 40 pounds. And that was crazy, you know, because of what was in me. But what I failed to see and what God was showing me this week, this I'm getting back to the message, y'all. I, I appreciate y'all patience for me to get back to where, where, I, where, where the message is, was I, I had to understand the joy that was before me. And see, there's peace in the midst of the chaos. I wasn't seeing it. See, I thought peace was, you know, I've preached on it, but you walking through it. So it's something different. But I thought peace was me being removed from my situation. Then I'd be at peace. God was like, no, I'm not moving it. I'm going to teach you how to find peace in the midst of it. Because of the situation, because you need to tell the story. You need to get through this so that when you see this, if you can look at the joy on the other side of this situation and what I want to do through you, helping other marriages, helping other men that's going through what I go through. Sometimes I don't even want to talk about me being divorced, right? Because a lot of people in the church feel some kind of way about it, right? Especially as a pastor. When I was going through the divorce, I didn't do nothing. If you look back at my timeline on spiritual combatants on, the, on YouTube, I only had one message that whole, almost a whole year from January to September 2019. One message because God told me to talk about my father on Father's Day. Other than that, I didn't say nothing until the divorce was done. I sat myself down. I was like, dude, I'm not moving. I'm not doing anything. So it's always been a point of shame for me. It's like one of the most, the greatest failures of my life. Right. Even I have a book on marriage and I want to take the book off. God said, put the book back online, back online and don't change a single word of it. So you can read the book. It's all and it talks, it dialogues all the crazy stuff that I was doing and think all my mistakes. But my marriage never recovered from that. It never recovered from those years. It never did for different various reasons. Right. So I own up to the things that I've had to do that I've done. But it gets to this place where we want peace from our situations and God don't remove us from it. And we get angrier and angrier because, Lord, you won't change it. But what God tries to teach us is how to change us in the midst of those situations. So then what God was giving me, like, Hamp, you don't have to respond like this, right? Because of these things that are happening, right? We respond when life hits us a certain way. We respond in a certain way because we're hurt. I'm not going to allow nobody to keep hurting me. So I'm going to respond. Right. That's not the way to go. There's a way to do it where I can live at peace, because what happens is the enemy tries to keep us away from peace. Because as, it, as Isaiah 26, 3 says, we'll be kept in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because we trust in him. If I trust in God, I'm going to trust the process. Yolanda talks about trust in the process. So if I trust the process, I understand that on the other side of this, I'm going to be better. And through that, through all the it, some of the stuff is still going on. But in that, I found peace. I'm finding peace. Even though some of the, the elements of the situation has not changed, I can respond differently. I can find peace in God. I don't miss my joy. So I had to get my mind off of the situation about what was going on right in my hands. What was going on in front of me? What was going on? All the things that people are doing. Right. I can't control what somebody does. I control my response. I control my ability to love. I control my ability to respond in a manner that God says, I'm pleased with that. I understand what these people are doing. But if you allow, as James says in James one, two to four, if you allow patience to have her perfect work, he's going to make us perfect, pure, complete, entire, wanting nothing. We will lack nothing. 
because I understand if the joy, see, God will call, see, God's not going to call us to do something when, when it's just super peaceful and there's nothing going on. There's going to be some type of not chaos, not always chaos, but there's going to be some type of turmoil that's existing within us that like we got to give up. You think about the rich and ruler, man, I got to give it. I can't give this money up. I got to give up my status. I got to give up everything I am and who I am to be able to have eternal life. That was his question. I, how, how may I receive eternal life? You got to give up this cash. I understand you was doing all that good stuff, but you got to give up the one thing that you're looking at for security, right? Some of us may see that money as security. I need you to let that go and just trust me. Walk with me. You may not have a place to stay, but I need you to trust me for the joy of having eternal life. It can be yours if you want it. If you choose to go through this thing, Jesus showed us in it. Now, not in that moment for the rich and ruler, but he shows us later that for the joy of seeing right and the joy of seeing all of you, all of you online, right? All of you to be able to have an eternal relationship with you forever, right? Because we're engrafted in, we're grafted in, amen, right? So for all of you to have this opportunity to spend an eternal Blessed with Jesus. He says, I'll go through it. I'll die. I'll, 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 I'll go through this shameful, painful death for you. Because I understand on the other side of this, man, you talking about some peace. You talking about some perfect peace. You talking about joy in his presence forevermore. Come on. Right. That's I'll do it. I'll go through it because I know what's on the other side. So this week, Y'all, as you're thinking about why, if you're facing something, if you're going through something and it's turmoil and it's trying or God is telling you release this thing and you haven't wanted to go love and you haven't wanted to love, be able to whatever it is. I just want you to think about the joy that's on the other side of that or what you're going to get. Right. It may be even better. Right. Because, you know, you, you know, um, God will do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think. So you, you in your mind may, may conjure up something, amen? You, you in your mind may be trying to conjure up something, but God is going to do even more. He, he may blow your mind. You just, in your little finite thinking, right? In my little finite thinking, I only think one type of way, right? I only see things one way, but God be like, hey, I, got, I got so much more for you. I have so much more than that. I got so much more that I want to give. So much more that I want to do if you allow me, if you give me the opportunity. Amen. Amen. Let us think about for a moment what God wants to give us. Amen. God wants to give you something great. God wants to be with you forever. God has a great plan for your life. It's not about what it looks like. It ain't what it looked like. Right. A lot of times we're looking at what it looked like. We're looking at that, right? Ephesians 3.20. That's what I was looking for, y'all. Ephesians 3.20. I was like, it's either like, it's 20, but it's like Galatians or Ephesians. All right, Ephesians 3.20. But we sometimes look at, we're looking at what it looked like right now. What it looked like right now, if we trust God and we depend on it, it ain't going to look like that when it's all said and done. It's going to be completely different and it's going to blow your mind. Even when God gives you a testimony or tells you what something's going to be, it's going to be even greater. Will God share with me? Like, look, man, I, I promise that my purpose of being divorced, that was never my intention, ever. I thought I, I wanted to be, I told I told my ex-wife when I got married, I, I wasn't even saved at the time. I was like, look, I don't believe in divorce. My parents, my grandparents were married 62 years. You talking about my heroes, my grandparents, my nan and grants, man, married 62 years, separated by death. I have no intention of being divorced. I had already resigned in my mind that I'll be married forever. And, and to this day, I struggle with that, if the truth be told. I struggle with that process because no matter what was going on in my marriage, I had accepted the fact that I would always be married to one person, right? I had resigned to that. So I struggle with that at times. There's nothing wrong with Yolanda. That's not has nothing to do with her. It has something to do with me and what I wanted. But God had a different plan. Like even if that, when he said that that's not what I have for your life, right? Some decisions made. That's why it's important to follow what God says because you never know when God says enough is enough. I've seen enough because I know God hates divorce. God definitely hates people not doing what he said do. And he ain't playing about that one. He ain't playing by his glory. I promise you that. So I can't miss the joy. So then I'm in the situation. I don't want to miss out on what God has for me. 
God has blessed me, right? He's blessed me with a beautiful family, right? I, and I'm blessed above measure. It's not what I think it would, would, would have been. It don't look like anything I thought it would ever be in my life, but I'm still blessed. I'm still blessed by God. And there's joy and there's happiness and there's love. And I want that. I want the peace of God. And it's there, but I got to look for it. But if I'm always looking at what the bad that's happening, I'm never going to see the good. God is blessed. Most I mean, probably all of us, we can all can see something good that God has given us. But we keep looking at that bad little thing. And we, we negate everything good that God has done. I got to keep my eyes stayed on the good, stayed on the joy for me being faithful. When you talk about, I told y'all a little bit earlier, when you talk about Jesus wiping tears from your eyes, some of us will be standing before Jesus with tears in our eyes. Lord, it was hard. I was faithful to the end. It was painful and it hurt. It hurt every day of my life. Every day it hurt me to live in this house. It hurt me every day to be at this job that you told me to be at. It hurt me every single day to go to this place. It hurt me every day to live here. It hurt me, Lord. It cost me something. And he just says, well done. Because he's looking for us to be faithful. Who's that good and faithful servant? We about to get there next week. Well, we won't get there this week. This week, we're going to talk about something different. We're going we're gonna to step off the lesson for a second and come back. But when we get back to uh, Matthew, right, he says he's looking for the good and faithful servant that did what the master asked. And sometimes the master is going to ask you to go to some difficult places, some difficult seasons. Believe me, when I came to Christ, I thought God was going to fix my marriage. I didn't come to Christ because he was the Messiah. I didn't come to Christ for that. So I want to tell that why y'all think I, I stop and say, you know what? I'm not doing no prayer. I'm going to do, I'm going to count the cost first because I didn't count the cost. No one talked to me about counting the cost. I don't hold it against them, but no one talked to me about like, this is who Jesus is. This is, this is why you're giving this decision. You, you just go up to the altar and then they're like, Hey, do you believe Jesus Christ, the son of God and you know, um, died and then was raised again in three days and sits at the right hand of the father. I'm like, yep. That was the first time I heard most of that stuff. I just said, yeah, just OK. I mean, if this was going, I want to be a Christian. So if this is going to help me fix my marriage, I'm good. I, I came to Christ for the wrong reason, but I came. God's like, I'll fix it while you're here. But I, you came for this, but I got something else for you. So that's why I do what I do. So that's why I wait. I want people to count the cost first, because because I personally uh, wasn't given the opportunity. Like I said, I don't, I don't fault nobody else for doing that. I take responsibility for where I'm at right now. So because I'm in this position. So now in my position, then I want to that's what I want to give. Amen. So we have these situations, y'all. I'm, I'm going to close. Where God has put us in some real tough spaces. But if if he would put his own son through that for us, you can guarantee like we as it says, and we start reading through uh, Hebrews 12, you go down a, a little bit further down, like we ain't at the shit point of shedding the blood. But God's going to ask you to give something that's going to be hard. He's going to ask you to go through something that's hard. But we got to keep looking, y'all, at the joy that's going to come as a quote of me giving it up. It's, I'm going to tell you, when you when you compare, right, when we went through uh, Romans 8, 18, it's not worthy. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. We got to stop, y'all, and take time to think, like, is hating this person? worth heaven and all of this peace that I'm going to get in my, like, you'd be like, man, when you start thinking about it like that, when you stop and think like, is that really worth it? The peace that I can have right now, some of us have been in anguish for 10, 15, 20 years. And God's like, man, if you get a hold of this, you won't have that pain. I've, I've been, I've been wanting to heal you, right? When, when there's times we're like, Lord, you are ever present help. In our time of trouble, you said that you will heal the brokenhearted and bind their wounds. Where are you at, God? He's like, I'm right here. You won't let that go. I'm not going to take it from you. God don't take nothing from nobody. He will give it if you want to give it away. See, some of us think God is going to make us do right. God don't make nobody do right. He'll send the Holy Spirit. He'll send other people. He'll give you his word. He does all these things. But one thing he ain't doing is making people live right. Because that's free will. It's the greatest choice that God has ever given. It's the choice. That's love. The choice to love. Choice to walk out and choice to come back again if you chose you. That's what he gave. He gave Adam and Eve the choice. You can choose to obey or choose not to obey. Right? If I want you to obey, there is no tree. Now, you know, we never know about the tree. Everybody, like I told before, everybody be in church. So we have a choice. But what I want and I pray that you receive today 
is that even th through, through the pain, through what you're going through, you can still find peace in that. You find peace because I understand my faithfulness will be rewarded. rewarded. Amen. Is that Hebrews 11, 6? Right. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if I believe that, that he's going to reward me, then I'll let go of this pain because I know my faith will be, it'll be rewarded. I'll be rewarded. I may not be rewarded on this earth. I may be, see, all of us want to be rewarded right now. Come on, y'all. Most of us want to be rewarded right now, right this second. Lord, I need some blessings now. I need you to bless me now. There's some people like you will not see the blessing until you get to the other side. Some of us, man, to the day of your last breath, it's going to be hard on the flesh. It's going to be a battle. But you say, Lord, I was faithful to the end. And he wipes your tears away. I know it was hard, my son. I know it was tough, my daughter. But you're here now. And you're here with me forever. Amen. And so he just want to remind us even now, like, look, you can find peace right now. You can have the peace. You can say that it hurts. You can go back and tell God that it's hard, like at least four or five times this week. And last week, and well, in the last couple of weeks, he's told me at least a few, four or five times, Hemp, I know what you're going through is hard, but you got to keep going. And then he'll give me another word. He'll give me another word. Hemp, I know it's hard. I've been, I've been a guy like a couple, like, Lord, this is hard. I mean, I tell y'all, like, I'm like David. Like, I'm going to go to God and give him exactly what's on my mind. I tell him exactly what's on my mind. Some of y'all don't want to hear this stuff that I'll be talking about with the Lord. Like, I'm pretty raw with God because I saw David was. And I saw as you empty yourself and cast all your cares, man, he fill you back up. So I'm telling God where I'm at. You say, Hemp, I know it's hard, but it's like, I'm not moving this. You're going to have to change. Because I used to be mad. Like, Lord, why I got to change? Right? You know, you got people doing all kinds of stuff. Why, why I got to change? I shouldn't have to change. No, I'm going to change because I need to be better because it's revealing by my response, by my bad negative response is revealing. I don't have the joy. I ain't got no peace. It's revealing in me that I need to change. So regard, I pray that the people around will change too, but it has to first change in me because that's the only person I, I can control. I can't control nobody. Nobody can't control children. Like I can't control I, my oldest daughter. Couldn't control her. Can't control my youngest baby. Right. Can't control the stepchildren. Can't control my wife. I can control me. So let my response be one that that's pleasing to God. Amen. Amen. Y'all. I didn't think I was going to talk this long for out for four or five minutes, but I pray Lord, that y'all receive this message that you don't allow yourself to miss the joy that God has for you. Amen. There's a great joy that God has for you. I want you to think about that joy. The joy you can have now. Like, man, I can have some peace in my, in my life, right? A lot of times we just want peace. We just want a little quiet. You can have it. Even in the midst of people doing it, like just ask the Lord, Lord, show me what that means. Show me how I can find that peace. Think about the joy that's before you. Because for every person it's different. Every person has to reach it a different way. What thing is keeping you, right? Worried and upset and fearful. That will lend to you the area that would you must give to the Lord. Whatever area, fearful, worried, mad about, whatever situation causes you not to run to God and be in, in Christ and say, this is where I'm at and I'm at peace with God, that's the place God's like, I need that. I need you to give that up. I need you to have a different perspective. I need you to see it different. See, that's why for the when we go when we talk about having joy, when you're going through diverse temptations, for a lot of us, we struggle with James 1. Because like, how am I supposed to have joy in the midst of, trying times like what is this that means they had there was a forward look i was looking to where i would be at once this is all done i'm gonna be a little bit more like jesus once i get i may not be all complete but i'm gonna be a little bit better thank you lord i see it coming i see my blessing coming I, i'm not gonna look at what's here i'm gonna look at what's over there father i thank you i thank you for blessing me i thank you for the work that you're about to do within me because i see it lord you're going to do exceedingly abundantly above that which I can ask or think. I see that, but Lord, I see my own little finite thinking, right? I got some glasses on. I, I don't see that clearly or all that you got going on, but Lord, I do see something. So I'm going there because I know I'm going to be better. I thank you, Lord. I'll go through this a little bit more. I'll go through this one more day. Come on. Some of y'all just got to be one more day, right? We, the Bible talk about just worry about, just worry about today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Okay, Lord, today I'm going to do What's that? Matthew 6, 34. I'm going to just worry about today. Today has evil of its own. Tomorrow, we worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, right? The next day, Lord, I just thank you. I, I can do this one more day, Lord. I can love one more day. 
I can be at peace one more day. I can give up this money one more day. I can give up this, 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 this thought process I have to want things and not to trust you one more day. I can do that, Lord, one more day. Then the next day, one more day, Lord. That's it. One day at a time that I can be faithful today. I can love today. I can choose to love. And I pray today that you all choose to love and you choose not to miss the joy that's before you. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we just thank you for this time that you give us, oh God. We just love you. We bless you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord God, for the difficulties of life that you give us, Lord God. These temptations that we may face, Lord God, that you allow into our lives to shape and mold us into the image of your son, Lord. I ask, oh God, that you grace us, oh God, and you will help us and strengthen us in the, in the weak areas, Lord. That we may have an outward look, Father God, to see the joy that is set before us, Lord God, of accomplishing the goal to be faithful, Lord God, to finish the race, Lord God, and to keep standing, Lord. Some of us, Lord God, many of us, Lord God, if not all of us, have struggled in this area, Lord. There's something that's kept us, hindered us, and that we didn't want to give unto you. We didn't want to release the pain. We didn't want to release the shame. We didn't want to release the money. We didn't want to release our status and our position our title, Lord God. We didn't want to move. We didn't want to go to places, Lord God. We didn't want to sell our cars. We didn't want to sell our houses, Lord God. There are things we wanted in our own comfort zone. But we know, Lord God, there's only true peace in you. There's only true peace in keeping our minds stayed on you, Father God, and making sure that we allow nothing to interrupt that, Father. So help us today. Speak to us through your spirit, Lord God. Give us instruction on how each of us can do that, Father. How we can have an outward look, Father God, to keep our minds stayed on what's ahead and not what's in the hand. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord, and I ask that you'll strengthen your people today as you love them a lot more than I do, Lord. You love them and you care for them, and you've never left them. You've never forsaken them. You've been with them through it all, Father God. You love them deeply. So, Father, we just thank you for this time for meeting us, Lord, and I pray that your people are encouraged by your message and challenged, convicted, Lord God. But most of all, Lord God, let them be committed to you, Father. We love you, and we bless you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. On Wednesday, I am going to talk about deception. I may talk about, I may throw in Halloween. I know Penny talked about Halloween. I may throw that in. But I owe you all a discussion. I talked about it for two weeks about um, deception and false teaching and kind of closing that out for everybody. So, because I just, like, God's like, Hamp, you ain't really talk about it. I talked about it, but not gave, like, an explanation on teaching it. So I want to show you my thought process. I'll be in 2 Timothy 3. Uh, I think it's 16, 17. I'll be in 2 Timothy 3. That's kind of where I'm going to start at as far as what doctrine is supposed to do and then the difference between what it's supposed to do and identifying when it ain't. So, well, yes, that's where I'm going to be at. So I'm going to start there and then we'll kind of close. I want to give a, a good teaching on that. I'll share with you probably two of the most controversial uh, doctrines well, they're not controversial. If you're against it, you're controversial. So I'll share uh, two of the most controversial, and then I'll kind of give you my position on those, as well as kind of teaching what it looks like in Romans 14, and when it looks like when we spoke about Ephesians 4, about unity in the faith. Like, even though we have different doctrinal positions and standing, then we can still move forward together in Christ. So I want to show you that, how we grow into spiritual maturity so that we have differences. There are differences that lead us away from God, but there are differences that do not. So the differences that do not, I am not going to bring division because it's still accomplishing what's in uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Amen. So I gave you all a nutshell what that message is going to be. in itself. But uh, other than that, that's all I have. So I appreciate you all joining us. Don't miss the joy. Amen. I, as I told you the other week, I'm not going to lose out what God has for me. God has been too good. I mean, God then showed up, showed out in my life in this season. Man, God has been faithful. I mean, I mean, never failed. Not when I owe. I mean, I got to get my stuff together. So I'm challenging myself like the end of this year. Like, man, we done. Some of them things I've been dealing with are going around. The, you know, some things we go around the circle, around the, around the bend again and again. Like, man, that stuff stops today. It's stopping. Man, I'm not going into 2024 with this. I, ain't, I don't want to go in this tomorrow, right? To, I'm dealing with this today because I know I got today. I don't know what it's going to be tomorrow, right? Because some people that are thinking they're going to be doing some stuff next week, they're not going to make it to the next week. They're going to be with the Lord. So I don't know, but I got today. So when I got today, I'm working this thing out. Amen. So I pray that you do not miss your joy. Amen. So y'all be blessed. Be encouraged. 
You go out there, love on your family, enjoy the goodness that God has for you because he has blessed us. Amen. So we got to get our minds off of what's in the hands and looking at what's ahead. Amen. So God bless y'all. We love you. Y'all be encouraged. We see you, Lord willing, on Wednesday. God bless y'all. Take care.